speak to him. Burn the bush like you did for Moses, and I will follow you. Collapse the walls like you did for Joshua, and I will fight for you. Still the waves like you did on Galilee, God, and I will listen. And so the man sat by a bush near a wall close to the sea, and he waited for God to speak. And God heard the man, so God answered. He brought down a wall, not of brick, but of sin. He stilled the storm, not of the sea, but of a soul. And God waited for man to respond. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited. But because the man was looking at bushes, not hearts, he was looking at bricks, not lives, he was looking at the seas, not souls, he decided that God had done nothing. Finally, he looked to God and he asked, Have you lost your power? God looked at him and said, Have you lost your hearing? I think I heard that little story for years. It's a story that Max Licato wrote that's from his book. It's called uh, Gentle Thunder. And I thought it was a good illustration, a good, let's say, start off a new series of messages that we're going to be looking at over the next couple of weeks. Where did you hear that? Or we could ask it this way, what or who are you listening to? A few weeks ago, we touched on how Jesus sometimes would end some of his uh, life lessons, parables, with a, with a phrase, it, was, it seems kind of strange, it seems kind of out of place, that at the end of them he would say, he who has ears, hear. It doesn't start at the beginning as, listen up, this is going to be important for you to pay attention to. But at the end of one of his life lessons, he says, he who has ears, hear. Now, you know as well as I do what or who we hear, what we listen to, has tremendous power in our lives. Why is that? It's because the things we hear are powerful. What you hear, what you listen to, what gets past your ears, through your ears, is the starting place for the information that forms your character, that forms your thoughts. And our thoughts are powerful. We hear it and it gets our ears and we roll that information around in our brains. We ponder it, we chew on it, we go, hmm. And then we start to develop those thoughts. We nurse them, and, and what happens? They grow bigger and more powerful, and they push other thoughts to the, to the background. And they form decisions and actions for us. Decisions that impact you, who you are, they impact your family, and they imp impact the community around you. We come to conclusions. 
We make decision, decisions based on those conclusions, and we take action on those thoughts and information that we have heard or read, and at times, we become trapped by those thoughts. For instance, when you were a child, and it happens in adulthood too, did you ever have someone that you looked up to? Maybe a, a parent, a spouse, a really good friend, maybe a, a coach, a teacher, and they said something negative about you? You ever experienced that? And we know that the effects of that can be devastating on our future life and how we think, how we make decisions, how we respond to life. That's powerful. Proverbs 23 says, For as he thinks within himself, so he is. So, question here. Where does that, for as he thinks, come from? Where does that come from? It's words that he listened to, that he heard, that he listened to. Words that got past. He took them in and he chewed on them and they started forming patterns about himself. It speaks to the power of words, the power of what we say, what we hear. Because they become thoughts that are either positive or negative, have positive or negative results. Just as God desires for you to listen to him and let those words reform, reframe, renew the way you think of yourself. So does Satan. The devil uses partial truths and what we're going to call fake news. And I'm sure you've heard that phrase. He will employ shame your past, your insecurities, what developed them? Words that you listened to, words that you heard, that you took in, then you pondered, and you let roll around until they affected your decision making. But God's word reminds us that there is a new way of thinking, a different way of thinking. Pastor Brian Jennings, he says, and I quote, you need to change your BS, that is, your belief system. And God tells us why. He uses Isaiah, his prophet, to tell us in Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The world that we're living in requires a different level of thinking, of perceiving, of discerning. When you're challenged with Satan, with the devil and what he's trying to get you to listen to, it takes supernatural thinking to distinguish. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, we demolish arguments, arguments in every pretense that sets itself up against knowledge of God. And we if every thought Christ. Now, what I'm 
about to share with you is no new news to you. You know that there's a war going on for your thought life, both in the natural and the spiritual worlds. I did some research on this, this term that you know, I'm sure you've heard uh, and so forth. It's fake news. Probably ought to define what fake news is and if we can believe Wikipedia. <laughs> this is what, how Wikipedia defines it. Information that is clearly fabricated and that has been packaged and distributed to appear as legitimate news. And I found some statistics that were pretty amazing to me. 86% of Americans admit to falling into the trap of fake news. 20% believe they encounter fake news at least once a week. 67% of adults 18 to 27 believe fake news is hazardous to our society, which makes this next figure kind of come into effect. Social media posts that share fake news receive six times the interaction. 70% of Americans feel that fake news has impacted their level of confidence in the government. Now, I kind of feel like that 70% might be a little low. Have you ever heard what Groucho, how Groucho Marx my mouth don't want to work. Groucho Marx, how did that interpret that? Did he get it? <laughs> you ever heard his definition of politics? Politics. He says, politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong remedies. Now, I wonder if that 70% of us not having very much confidence in the government isn't a little bit higher than that. So we can see fake news. What we hear has a powerful impact on us and on society. Even the Associated Press News Network knows this. They have a running column that is called Not Fake News. It's a design to correct misinformation that is out there. Forbes publication notes that misinformation is here to stay. It says that three quarters of Americans are overconfident in their ability to distinguish between the truth and fake news. Well, you know what happens when you're overconfident you're more apt to share that fake news. Goes back to that six times the interaction. The Babylon Bee is a Christian satire publication that they advertise themselves as being fake news you can trust. Fake news you can trust. Here's an example of one of the things that they put out not long ago. In a landmark meeting, the NFL, National Football League, just removed all coaches, players, and fans who have ever said a bad word. Only Tim Tebow remains. Fake news. But I found it interesting that this definition that Wikipedia has here for fake news, it also went on to call it falsehood, lies, and father of lies. How is it that Jesus describes Satan in John 8? He is a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. 
When he lies, he speaks with his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan deals in fake news. Why? Well, one of those reasons is to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus tells us in John 10. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't stop there. He also adds on, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He wants us to transform our thought life. And he wants to get you thinking on the the next level way that leads us to a, a flourishing life that we desire to have. A life that, as we've been talking about over the last couple of years, a life that thrives, not just survives. That is what Jesus came to give us. Life, life to the full. He wants to transform our thought life and to get you thinking on this next level and flourish. Paul tells us in Colossians 3 how that happens. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. What are you you hearing? What do you set your mind on? If we believe and we trust in Jesus, Paul tells us in Ephesians 2 that we are seated with him, with Jesus, in the heavenly places. Heavenly places, that's where we'll filter the words that we hear in a much different way. In other words, you have a different vantage point for filtering what you hear and what you dwell on. Fake news or real truths? Fake news or real truths? Paul goes, writes in the first Corinthians, sorry about that. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things. We do, right? But each person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. He writes to the Romans in Romans 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world. In other words, do not listen to fake news. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does that happen? By what you're listening to, what you're hearing, the real truths. And what is the result of that? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Isn't that what you desire? How do you know his will? Are you listening for the real truth? So let's go back to our title page and ask this question again. Where did you hear that? Who or what are you listening to? Can you see how important your answer to these questions are right now? God wants to, he desires to speak to you. For you to listen, to hear, to ingest his truth. And to let that truth, his truth, impact and change your mind. The way you make decisions. How it impacts you, your family and your community, like we said earlier. So, next question. Are you hearing God? Well, how do we hear God? 
for some believers, hearing God is, seems like it's second nature to them. But for the rest of us, it's a struggle to hear God sometimes. We are Christian. We have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yet, sometimes, we struggle with hearing God, don't we? I don't think I'm alone here. Look, just because you have a basketball in your hand doesn't make you a basketball player. It doesn't matter if you're wearing the latest Air Jordan shoes or wearing a Kobe Bryant jersey. That doesn't make you a basketball player, right? Just because you're sitting in a church, just because you have, own a Bible, doesn't make you a Christian. There are some fundamentals in listening for and hearing God. Some believers attempt to hear God but they have no guardrails. They have no fundamentals in place. Andy call, Stanley calls them guardrails, which is a, a, a good, good visual for us. They're not discerning about what their thoughts are or where they come from. Are they thoughts from God or are they thoughts from the devil? They're not good at as we've been talking about, distinguishing between fake news and real truth. And what happens? They come up with some crazy things that they think that they heard from God. I read about a young man here not too long ago that declared that God told him not to get a job. Yeah, that's what I did. Hmm, kind of goes against scripture there. Whose voice is he listening to? Well, that brings up probably the primary way that God speaks to us, and that's through his written word. The Bible. Now, this isn't the only way he speaks, and we're going to look at five different ones, and this isn't an order uh, of them. But primarily, I think he speaks to us through his written word. And what's so important about that is that anything with the other categories we're going to look at, if it doesn't line up with his word, it's fake news. When we are hearing from God, the word, his word, is that measuring rod. It is a, the template by which we judge what we are hearing. Is it fake news? Is it real truth? It's always been the character of God to, to speak to us, to want to communicate with us, to have a personal, close personal relationship with man. So God wants us to think with his mind, to change our carnal minds and get it, our minds to in alignment, in agreement with the mind of Christ that we read earlier. I don't know if you've ever driven a car that is the front end is out of alignment it's not easy to, you relax and it goes, start going one way or the other. It's important to stay in line with God's real truth. How do we know that? He writes it in his word. Remember what we said back in with, uh, God said with Isaiah? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways, your ways. Scripture says that the word of the Lord is active, that it's sharper than a two-edged sword, it's inspired, it's God-breathed.
a number of weeks tonight going through the study on 2 Timothy, where Paul is encouraging Timothy to finish the race, to get back into ministry, to do what God has called him to do, to fulfill his purpose. And he reminds him, Timothy, Scripture is God breathed. And it is teaching, rebuking, and training in righteousness. Why? So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Can think with the mind of Christ. How does that happen? By paying attention to his word. God breathed. Useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. God's word. Breathed by God. It's of supernatural and divine order. But unfortunately, there are a lot of believers that have dust covering their Bibles. I think it's Adrian Rogers that once said, we need to stop treating our Bible like a math book and start reading it like a love book. And I found it interesting. I, f- I found some statistics by Pastor Brandon Cox that he had posted. And what happens when we read the Bible just four times a week or more? But his statistics were read the Bible four times a week. Feelings of loneliness drop by 30%. Anger issues, they drop 32%. Bitterness in relationships drop 40%. Alcoholism drops 57%. Feeling spiritually stagnant drops 60%. Viewing porn drops 61%. What are all of those? That's fake news that draws us in, isn't it? What happens when... We, in reading the scripture, when we start hearing, listening to, ingesting real truth in the word, what happens? They go down. They decrease their power. Our sharing of our faith jumps by 200%. And our self-discipline jumps 230%. That's what happens when we listen to God's real truth. Another way that we hear God is in prayer. Not going to stay too long on this one. Prayer is, is simply our communication. Communication with God. What is communication? It's a sharing back and forth. It uh, helps us to form our opinions and what we're hearing to change our minds, to gather information. You can pray for guidance, compassion, understanding, discernment, and wisdom. The process of prayer can bring humility Because we recognize our limitations. And we lift them up to God, who has no limits. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that prevents conviction, pre- brings conviction of sin. And what does that do? That sets us back onto the right path. What does that look like? Scripture calls it regeneration, new birth, being a new creature. We produce the fruits of the Spirit. 
we receive gifts of the Spirit, as we pay attention to that, as we ingest that and let that rule our lives, our, our minds are renewed. We have that power for living, to live life to the full, to flourish. And it also gives us courage and encouragement to live that life. One of the most important relationships that you need to have in your life is with the Holy Spirit. And then he also uses circumstances. Let's call them God moments. Events in our lives that God uses to get our attention. God moments. They're nothing new. God got the attention of Moses, how? By burning a bush. God got the attention of Jonah, by how? By letting a whale swallow him, a big fish swallow him. And later it was a vine. God got the attention of Saul of Tarsus, later called Paul. How did he get his attention? With a bright light and a loud noise that caused some health issues. He was blind. And sometimes God uses our circumstances to get our attention, to wake us up, to shake us, to listen to him. And fifthly, community. God uses community to change us. You will grow in your faith and be able to recognize fake news and real truths. The things that you listen to, you'll be able to develop that more in community with other believers. Why? Because you've been created to be a part of community. That includes having mentors, leaders, Teachers, they're all a part of that process, which also means that you are mentors, leaders, and teachers in that process for someone else. In community, we help each other to grow. We encourage, we build up, we forgive. We even walk through some really tough stuff together. There will be people that you will struggle with and you will get the opportunity to forgive. And you have the opportunity to dump your own junk and ask for forgiveness. We're going to continue this series next week, but I want to leave you with this. We're overwhelmed with information And so much of it is misinformation. Who do we believe? What do we believe? We live in a noisy culture that is screaming for our attention. And it has an agenda to shape our thoughts, our minds, the way we process things. There's people, problems, politics, They're all screaming for our attention. God wants us to hear him. He wants to speak to you, for you to hear his voice. It's his nature, it's his character. God wants you to hear, to listen to, to ingest his real truths. So I ask again, who are you listening to? What are you listening to? He who has ears, hear. Father, open our ears up to hear your real truth. Father, to dwell on that, to meditate on that. 
to roll it around in our brains to where it becomes a part of us. Father, we want to be your faithful children. Forgive us for the times that we listen to the world. We listen to Satan and his distractions, to his fake news. And forgive us, Father, when we have based our lives upon them, fake news, that fake news. Father, I pray for each one of us now with your spirit that they would, each one of us would pray the prayer of David because we can become so overly confident even in you in ourselves in our understanding of you. And that's dangerous. So I pray that we would pray this prayer of David. Show us my wayward ways, my wayward thoughts. Father, that we would see them to ask for forgiveness and be forgiven of them and turn our ears to you to hear your words. Your words of strength, your words of encouragement. Father, that we might live the life that you created us to live through Jesus to the full, that, Father, our lives would flourish in you. Ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.